Hi, in this video I'm going to give you a little introduction to Observable and to give you some of the reasons why we're choosing this tool as the main tool for our class. So, Observable is a platform for developing notebooks or for creating code. It was designed to be reactive and to actually uh, make it easy for you to test different things and start creating prototypes that actually end up being final products. Um, if you go and start looking at the different um, examples that are available uh, for for during a certain time, like for instance, these are the trending notebooks for this week. And as you can see, I managed to get one in there exactly perfect timing for, for the video. Um, you will see that there is a ton of things that people have been creating with this. And, and they're actually quite cool and easy, easy to make once you're there. And one of the coolest things about it is that you can actually have interactions and many things and if I want to see something in here that I think is really cool and maybe I want to change something out of that like for instance I don't know like let's say that I want everything to have a, a different color then I can just do that and create my own version so it's very in that sense it's very similar to 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 github um, the other reason for it is that it's actually a reactive platform that it's very easy for you to load uh, different data and, and to create different visualizations. So let me see if I can go and create a very quick uh, example to demonstrate my idea. So I'm creating a new uh, notebook in here. Let's say that this is going to be an intro to Observable. And then as you can see, we have a, oops, sorry, a basic uh, cell in here that it's uh, the, where we are actually writing our code. And then um, this cell has different characteristics. I can use this button in here for pinning or unpinning if I want to see the code or not. Then I can also use this other button to execute the cell. And as you can see, it starts with this one that is a markdown cell. Now, the other thing is that let's say we want to load some data. So in that case, I actually had searched for this on the city of Berkeley open data repository. And then as you, let's see, for instance, this specific one in here. This is using a server called Socrata that it's very common for um, publishing data uh, from cities and different resources. It's quite flexible. And one of the things I like about it is that you have an API for accessing things. So for instance, this is a data set with 58,000 records. Here are all the different 13 columns that you have on it. Uh, you have a sample in there. And if you go here in the API, then you can see it. you can download things on uh, JSON or CSV. So I can actually copy that and then coming back in here for loading that I can just paste uh, this as the as a new URL and then create a new variable and then I can start loading the data. So if you know a little bit of JavaScript and later you're going to be learning more about this, you know that there is a tool in the browser called fetch that will go and download that resource and returns a promise. And we are going to learn more about that later, but actually Observable resolves the promises for you. So if you know about this, then you know that loading a JSON file with a promise, you uh, take that promise and then you say when the data is ready, convert it to JSON. And then oh, voila, you get your data uh, and your first field, uh, 1000 uh, records. So I can actually go and start creating like changing different parameters in here or downloading the other ones, or for instance, I think if I say that I want to pass a parameter called limit, for instance, in this library and say I want to 2001, 2000 records, then I can run this and by rerunning, take a look at that this one immediately changed and it immediately told me that there are 2000 records. So let's do that once more and a little bit more slowly. And then if you see it's actually changing at the same time. So this is a big difference between this and Jupyter Notebooks in the sense that uh, observable notebooks are reactive. So the way that things are executed uh, are based more like what you have on a spreadsheet where uh, every cell depends uh, that depends on other cells will update every time the other cells uh, change. So the thing happens in here. So always keep that in mind because it doesn't really matter what order you have things on, they will always execute in that specific order. So. If I want to get the other ones, because remember that this was like 53,000 uh, records, then I can actually go and start writing some code to 
to look to the different elements. But one of the coolest things of Observable is that you can reuse examples created by other people. So for instance, if you look at Socrata, I created an example that actually lets you download all of the pages and then with a um, useful function like this one in here, I can replace this by load Socrata URL and then uh, voila, you get the 58,000 records. If we keep on getting crazy, like for instance, there is another library that I also created that allows you to summarize uh, some data and then let's say that we do something like this and then we download my observable notebook <coughs> and then with that uh, I can start summarizing my data and say I want to see a summary of my data and then voila dun, you have a visualization with 58,000 records where you can actually filter and then uh, and see the parameters in there like for instance it's interesting that you can jump the uh, sort by gender, you can see the distribution of males versus females, and if you go closer here, then you can see that there are some genders that were assigned the, the record zero. And this is very interesting too, because when you see uh, the ages, regions, and enforcement are actually zero too. So uh, that seems to be like an error in, in the data in there. So uh, if you wanna keep on going crazy, like one of the other things we could do is like, if I wanna see the specific one side filter, then I can save that as the filter ones uh, or, or let me show you something else first before doing that, sorry. So let's say that, for instance, I want to visualize these with other ways. So um, for instance, I, maybe I want to see what is the distribution of people that, res that were stopped because of their gender and also by their ages. So I, I get a little bit of that in here, but let's say that maybe I just learned about tree maps in the class and then I want to use a tree map for that. So here is the basic tree map example uh, from Mike Bostock. And then as you can see, here is a cell that it's called chart. So if I want to reuse that one, then I just need to go and import that one. Notice that I'm actually um, putting all of the imports in at the bottom of the page. It's not a requirement. Uh, but it's kind of like a standard that, that, that is common in Observable. Remember, the order of the cells don't really matter. Notice that I'm actually showing the Navio after, uh, before loading the data. So if I load this chart, now I have access to that cell, and then now I can come in here and actually show it. So let's say I want to show it in here, but that's using uh, the others charts data. So I can actually change that by saying, that I want to change the data cell or actually saying uh, with three data as data, okay? So here comes a problem and is that actually three data doesn't exist. So now I have an error because that's hasn't, that is not existing. So I could go and say, you know what? Like my three data, it's going to be equals to my data. So when I do that, then you still get errors. And when you start looking, you say, why? Uh, if you take a look at the example in here, you will see that the data here has a very specific format. So luckily I have yet another library that I can use for that, that I created just for this demo that it's called tree, uh, sorry, table to tree. And I think uh, the notebook is called like this. And then uh, the advantage of that is that it's, uh, and of course, uh, let me jump in there very quickly. Oops. Can I please go to the page? Uh, so it's called table to tree with capital T, of course. So coming back to where we were. Um, so I can just change that in here. And then I can start converting my data just by using table to tree with my data. And then if you see um, table to tree, if you see a little bit of the documentation, then of course, uh, I, I, I didn't include in there. Hopefully this will take me there. There we go. So you just need to say what are the attributes by which you want to nest. So in this case, my attributes can be like gender, as we said, and age. And then with that, immediately by reactiveness, you get immediately the, the actual tree in here. If you want to make this one smaller, then let's say that I also want to say that it uses a height uh, parameter. 
So when I do that, I need to have the height. So I can say, come in here and say that my height is going to be like 600 or maybe put it here in the middle. So when I do that, the interesting thing is that I can change this for 400 and then, uh, or 200, and just by the reactiveness, everything changes immediately. If you wanna go fancier, then you can just say, I'm going to put an HTML input of type range, and then with a minimum value of, let's say, 100 pixels and a maximum value of 900 or, yes, 900. And then with doing that, you immediately get an HTML input that you can move. Unfortunately, this one is not working. And the reason is because I want this height to be a number, but it's actually an HTML input. So I could say this is my input. And then I could say my height equals the input's value. And by doing that, I actually um, can see the change. But the problem is that Every time I move this, is not really updating, so I need to call this again. So that's not exactly what I want. So you can go and listen for events and use a generator, and you're going to uh, you can learn more about that on the documentation for Observable. But instead, they have a very handy function, and that's why I didn't wanted to show that before. That it's called view of, and the view of it's kind of magical in a way that it it does two uh, um, uh, assignments at the time. First, uh, when you in the cell that you're creating in it, it will return the actual element so you can actually show it. And then every time the element changes, it's going to trigger an event that is going to change the other one. And since you have reactiveness, everything else is going to change. So now my height is a number that I can change. And as you can see, this is very convenient. I can apply the same concept in here and say that I have with observable, I want like the filtered data with something like a uh, filter Navio. And then when you do that, instead of converting the, the table to tree here, I can do it with filtered, uh, with something like this. And then the cool thing about this, uh, for instance, let's uh, remove the code for those, is that then I can go and start filtering by certain elements. And the moment that I filter for those, then you can see that the other chart is changing. So actually this is, a little disappointing because remember that we are grouping by gender and by age, but I'm not really seeing those in there. So if I go back uh, to the tree map example, uh, let's see that here, then you can see that there are other alternatives for the tree map, like for instance, this nested uh, tree map. Uh, and then there is there was one that I just discovered very recently that is this cascade tree map. And one of the coolest things of the examples that my postdoc is creating is that um, uh, he's using exactly the same format for, for, for each one of the examples. So he always has a chart, a cell, and a data cell. So the, the takeaway from that, or the, the important thing about that, is that I can replace here, remember, where we were importing the trim up. I can change that for a cascade trim up, and voila. Now you have this art. So you want to go fancier. <laughs> I even create another input, like similar to the other one that I think it's called multi input. I think it's what I call that thing. Um, multi auto select here. So basically the advantage of this is that now you can have an input where you can search for different elements or select the ones that you want to create. And I'm going to show you why that could be useful for us. So. For instance, let's say that I want to put this to be changeable. So let's say these are my attributes. And then I can put in here that this is the view of my attributes. And then put that as this. Okay. So um, yes. So this is just an element. So it should be something like this. And then just by doing that, you can see that if I change actually, for instance, the order of these things here, then uh, immediately changes everything. Now I want this to be something that the, my users can change. So I can come in here and then we can use the example that I just added, that is the multi auto select, this input. And then I think, can I put a title in here? Uh, say uh, attributes, if I can write, of course I cannot, sorry about that. I have to improve that. Uh, but in this case, at least I can go and select which ones I want. So then I can say, I want to select like the age or I want to select the age and the gender or just the age. And then we can go even fancier and then say, 
you know what, I'm going to take a look at what are the elements in the first row of my data. And then this allows me to see all of the possible attributes in there. So I can group by gender and then by the recent. So I can see that males are stopped by traffic and investigations where women don't seem to be called that much for that, at least for this selected, that piece that was selected. And it seems like I have a, a little error in here with something. But let's say, for instance, that I want to filter by this age and this other age. And then, uh, of course, maybe that's where I'm getting the, the error. So let's say maybe gender and age. And then I can do filterings in here and have the other thing changing. So for the final part of this, I can even go fancier. And then I can say, you know what? I'm going to create not only this, uh, but I'm also going to be using a couple of other examples by Mike, like for instance, the zoomable uh, sunburst. Uh, if I guess sunburst. Uh, and then also, the, for instance, the zoomable icicle. And then uh, you can call these different things, like for instance, chart uh, stream up. And then I can change this one as sunburst and then this one as IC call. And then, uh, of course, this one breaks because chart doesn't exist anymore. But uh, I can go and keep in on going crazy and say I want another selector that comes. And the only reason that I know all of this is because I have been working uh, with Observable for a while. So this is, for instance, an, an um, notebook that you import quite often because you can come in here and say, I want a selector that has three options, tree map, icicle, and sunburst. And then by having that, I can save that in here as type of tree. And then I can decide which tree I want to create with depending on the type of tree. So for instance, if type of tree equals icicle, then I return the icicle. And if not, then depending if type of tree equals, let's say, sunburst, then return the sunburst. And if not, then just return the tree map. So by doing this, the, here is like the final cool thing about this is that you can actually change this and then have a nice a zoomable icicle tree or going into the other one and then having a sunburst and let the user choose that. Now, let's say that you already built this, you actually created some documentation and you want your users to be able to use this. So you can just click here and, and uh, uh, download the SVG or the PNG or even fancier, you can go and say, I want to label link sharing. Let's see if this works. And then after doing that, then uh, you go in here and then you say, I want to embed this code. And then you get this piece of JavaScript code that you can go and write in any HTML document, even in a platform like CodePen that uh, allows you to write HTML and it's the one that we used to use in the class. And then here in the HTML part, I can come and use that one. And then it will be downloading the data directly from the Socrata server. It's going to be processing it with everything we learned. It even readjusts for the space available and then displays the tree map that, that you created. Now, if you want to have the controls, then there is also a tool for that. And if you search for handy embed uh, code generator, this is a notebook that the people from Observable created for helping you um, embedding notebooks precisely. So let's see if it works with this one. And in here, it's giving me some trouble. Yeah, so it's happening the same that happened when I was practicing. So let's say that I make this public in here. So now I have a new URL that maybe I can go and put in there. Oh, maybe it's because it's part of, of the Berkeley team. So in here, you can just say, I want to see the view of the filter the view of the height, the view of the attribute, and the view of the type of the tree. And then finally, the chart. Here you have some code. Maybe you want to add um, some link back to your notebook. And then um, just copy this one, 
let's put it here on code pen for example and then if you want to start creating other stuff in here my cool piece and then say for instance i don't know buy john with and then put a little beer and uh, bear whatever you pronounce that emoji then you have your visualization completely embedded so this is a little long but i wanted to show you like why should you be using observable because it's reactive because you have all of the t3 examples in there and mega light examples in there it's a quick way of developing things and still be producing things that are quite effective as you can see here you can get really fancy code and it's uh, actually quite uh, uh, fast uh, and so having production things embedded like this it's also very easy so hopefully you like this and learn d3 and observable and Vega light and all of those things and start producing really cool stuff looking forward to it